Hello everyone and welcome to week 10 of the TBL. Your New York Empoleons are here taking on Tishen and the Orange City Orangaroos. Now a reminder, since I know not everyone watches the Team Builders, that we are taking a week off next weekend for the holidays. Just to give everyone some time before the playoffs once everything settles and all the dust calms down to get right back into the swing of things next year. So we're not going to be having a battle the weekend of January 1st. Instead, we are going to start the playoffs, the quarterfinals, in the weekend of the 7th. Just a heads up, that's not going to be happening next weekend. But we have already clinched our spot at 8-1 into the quarterfinals with the one seed in the division. So we are all set, ready to go, just waiting to see who my opponent is. Tishan has also guaranteed himself a spot in the playoffs. He also he has some stake in this match as to who he ends up facing, so he's probably going to push himself to win this match. We just have to have fun. That's the plan today. So, just a reminder, what I'm expecting him to bring, Suicune, Espeon, Landorustherian, Magnezone, Ninetales Alola, and Mega Gyarados. I had to check my notes right there. He may not bring those, he may bring those, who knows? But we're going to get connected with him, and I will see you guys back here in a second. So, be right back. Hello everyone and welcome back. We are here connected to Tishen and we are going to get this battle underway as soon as possible. I don't know why I get so nervous before every one of these battles, even the ones that don't matter as much. I've had a playoff spot clinch since like week 7 uh, and I clinched last week the top seed of my division. So this battle like for me is utterly meaningless. Win, lose, or draw I end up as the one seed and walk into the playoffs. So I have no reason to be nervous. I set up a team not expecting to be nervous, and here I am panicking. So he goes Victini, uh, Claydol, all sorts of things I was not expecting. So no Mega Gyarados, that's really good actually. Victini, Claydol, Landorus, T, Ninetales, Suicune, and Magnezone. So let's. So there's no Mega Gyarados, instead he has the Claydol. Which is cool. That thing may have explosion or some shenanigans. Um, don't know yet what it's gonna run, but there's a clay doll and there's no Espeon. There is instead a Victini, uh, which is another psychic type to worry about, but not quite, not quite the same thing. And we do outspeed it with our Infernape and stuff like that. Now I expect him to lead with the Nine Tails, and as a result, we're just gonna lead with our Infernape right here. Um, because Infernape has the ability to deal with it. Note that because he doesn't have the Espeon, the Ninetales is going to be the only thing that outspeeds our Infernape and our Latias. So we got to watch out for the outspeeding the Latias because it does a lot of damage to it. I did eventually calc that, and it does a lot of damage to Latias. So we can't really leave Latias in on a Ninetales. Doesn't match up super well, but um, we do have the ability to switch out into something like a Lucario or Mega Venusaur on it. So as long as I can get my Mega off. So Lucky Charm... The Victini will be leading off against my Infernape. Now, I do outspeed this, and I do have the capability to, to Stealth Rock while the Victini's here. Psychic is gonna hurt. Uh, Psychic does not start with an O. Psychic is gonna hurt. If he's running, like, Modest Nature, Max Special Attack, Psychic, he does Oko me. Um, so I've got to watch out for that. I could... He could think I have the U-turn and switch out. Um, the other option is going straight out into Umbreon here to scout if this thing is physical or special. He may U-turn here, predicting that switch. Um, I don't want to lose Infernape just yet. Brick Break on the Aurora Veil later is too important. So we're going to switch right out into my Umbreon. And we're going to get a little bit of information about what this Victini wants to do does u-turn i thought he might i thought about just going for the rocks there um does does u-turn into my umbreon that's unfortunate but that's fine uh he makes a good prediction there and this battle is underway now i i i mean you guys are sort of aware but i did do it pretty quick that i did think about putting up the rocks there expecting him to u-turn i did mention i think he, he thought he might do it but i couldn't risk him just going for a psychic um and demolishing me so it wasn't worth taking that risk. Landorus is going to come out here, and at this point, he intimidates me. How much does a foul play do to a Landorus? Um, it's doing like 60 to 70 percent. Superpower is doing about 80. So if he does have superpower, he just takes me out right here. If he just goes for the rocks, though, I can get a toxic on this thing, 
and I like the idea of just getting a toxic on this thing. So we're gonna do that. Uh, if he superpowers and takes me out, then I lose Umbreon. He also U-turns with the Landorus. So he's just chipping away, chipping away. Got those U-turners sitting here. Um, that's fine. Goes into the Magna Zone, so he doesn't actually get toxic. So that's a good switch on his part. But it does allow me to go out into the Venusaur uh, pretty freely or stay in. How much does a Magna Zone Thunderbolt do to a Calm Nature? Yeah, Thunderbolt's doing 25% to me. So I don't know what he's going to do, but he's not going to kill um, from this range. And so I can scout. I expect this thing to be Scarf. So I'm just going to click Wish. Um, he does click Thunderbolt. That's not going to kill. And we don't have Protect, but I'm pretty sure that he's Scarfed. And so Umbreon can switch out into Mega Venusaur, which gives me a free Mega. And that's a really cool thing. Gives me a free Mega. And Umbreon does, might have speed, I think that's speed the Clay Doll. So if I need to get a Heal Bell off later, um, I can definitely bring it on the Clay Doll. Um, and get that heal bell off, or it's just good death fodder, so gives me a free switch into something else. So we are going to get this Venusaur in here, he is going to Thunderbolt again, um, it's not going to do very much at all, just please don't paralyze me, he doesn't paralyze me, we get the wish up, and Venusaur comes in for free, and now we get our Mega off, so we're not weak to Blizzard, which is really good, and I can freely click Knock Off on his entire team. Um, and he doesn't have Espeon, so I can also freely click, uh, Leech Seed. And those two things are basically the best thing ever. So I'm gonna click Knock Off. Uh, he stays in. He's not Scarfed. What is he? What are you? We're gonna see what item he's holding. So he is a Shed Shell. So he didn't want to be... status I honestly don't even know what a shed shell. That's not the sh that's not the shell bell. It's a shed shell. What does the shed shell do? Shed shell. I don't even know. If the user tries to switch the holder with another Pokemon. The switch is not affected by any moves or abilities which are prevented from leaving. Huh. What ability? Oh, so he he was thinking that I would trace his his magnet pole and kill him. He thought about that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I can get a leech seed here though. He's gonna flash cannon again. So now he can't stay. He can't switch out of my magnet pole when my Gardevoir does come in. Um, but he's not scarfed. We get a leech seed. And now he can click synthesis and do what Venusaur does best. And we're back to 50%. So if he switches out, we're back to 100%. The other thing I could do is just click Leech Seed again. Do I think he's going to stay in here? I really don't. But what does he go into? Victini? Victini's a pretty good switch. Um, I, I want to click Leech Seed again. He outspeeds me. Which is really good information, because Venusaur is faster than Magazo naturally. I'm going to click Leech Seed again. So he switches out into Nine Tails this time. So I don't have the rocks up yet. It's a very bold switch. Um, we'll get another Leech Seed off on the Nine Tails this time. Now, I think he may have done that because Synthesis would only do 25% once that's up. But we do get the Leech Seed back. And now if he wants to set up the Aurora Bell, he's going to leech get another turn of Leech Seed. So, how much does a Blizzard do to a Mega Venusaur, now that I have Mega Ball? Uh, actually not as much as I was worried about. It only does 30%. Giga Drain's doing 40% without the Aurora Bell up. So I don't mind him getting a... Blizzard off. The other option is going for a knockoff here. But I'm going to click Giga Drain. See what happens. 
Nice DMZ. Psyche MZ. Ooh, okay. How much does this do? This does 49. Assuming that it's a uh, Psy Shock. Which I think it's, I think it's not. I think it's, um, I don't remember what that is. That's a crit. That crit may have mattered. Because I think it's Extra Sentry, which is the same base power as Psy Shock. I, that crit may have mattered. Um, but either way, uh, I want to say the switch is into Lucario here. Hold on. We know that he had Psyche MZ, which is used. And I think it's on Extra Sentry. I don't think this thing learns any other Psyche type moves. And so Nine Tails kills Mega Venusaur with Z Extra Sensory. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to see how much a close combat would do to this thing. Close combat's doing 78.5 to 92.6, and Moonblast is doing 50 to 60%. Bullet Punch would Oko, but I don't want to click Bullet Punch, expecting him to go out into, like, the Magna Zone or something, knowing that that's probably what I'm going to click. The other thing is I could click, like, an Ice Punch, but I don't want to choice myself into that. Close Combat's still going to be doing how much to Landorus after an Intimidate? 20%, whereas Ice Punch does, like, 60%. So I don't love the switch into Lucario here, but I also don't hate it. Um, because I do get a chance to go for a move and put pressure on him. Um... Close combat can o-code the nine tails from here, and it just puts a huge dent in his team. If he does go into the magna zone, it o-codes the magna zone. So I'm just gonna click close combat here, and if he does stay in and moonblast, it does 50%. If he does switch out into the landers, that would be worst case scenario. If he goes in the magna zone, that's best case scenario, because uh, this thing is just dead to a close combat. So. Now, Magnezone goes down, so Lucario, oh my gosh, where's my cursor? Lucario kills Magnezone with close combat. Takes a little bit of hail damage, but that's not going to matter. So now I can switch out into Umbreon when he goes into the obvious Landorus here. He doesn't know if I'm Scarfed or not, he just knows that I made a prediction, which works out for me. Um, if he goes into Landorus or Suicune, Suicune now becomes a problem because my Venusaur is dead. Victini's here. That thing can eat a close combat, and I'm at minus one and don't want to deal with this right about now. So, he could U-turn. Um, he could definitely U-turn. I have to save my Latias for the Suicune. Gracium Z to a Suicune, which I know doesn't matter at this moment, but gotta check for later. Grassy MZ to a Suicune is doing 72 to 85%. If I can get one Calm Mind up, it's Okoing. So, um, definitely saving Latias. Lucario is super valuable for later as well. Um, I think Umbreon, probably sack Umbreon off. If he U-turns, he U-turns. If not, that's fine. Um, and if he does like go for the Psychic here, then Umbreon, we can see if he's like choiced in some way. Because um, if he switches out, then he's choiced. So he goes for the V-Create. So he probably is Scarfed. I have to play as if he's Scarfed here. Um, but he gets the minus one speed and defenses. So even if he's Scarfed, uh, Latias outspeeds. How much does Victini? So it's a physical Victini, so we get that information out, which is really good. So let's assume it's adamant. Why not? Um, v create. Adamant banded V create. Just for argument's sake, does not Oko a Latias even after hail damage. And a the problem is that two Shadow Balls would kill, but a Shadow Ball plus a Calm Mind does not kill. 
But if I can get my Calm Mind up... His Ninetales is still alive, though, so I can't just Calm Mind. I have to Tailwind. No, I can't just Tailwind. Now, I could go out... His defenses are dropped. Hold on. His defenses are dropped. So his special defense is at minus one. So even at neutral... Yeah, so at plus one, a Shadow Ball kills. But if he goes right out into his Ninetales... If I'm at plus one, I do survive a Blizzard from a Ninetales at plus one and a Moonblast. And Energy Ball has a chance to Oko it. Well, I don't want to click Energy Ball on the Ninetales because I don't have it for the Suicune. But I think that's my play. I think that's my play. So let's mark Victini. Kills Umbreon with V Create. Um, okay. So now I can click Calm Mind. Or I can click Tailwind. I think Calm Mind is the play. Because getting that plus one special defense is huge. And if he stays in and V creates again, then Shadow Ball definitely kills. But yeah, I don't expect him to stay in here. Goes out into Eye Guy, the Clay Doll. Is he gonna explode? How much does an explosion do? Not that much. Okay. And a Bloom Doom kills. I kind of want to Calm Mind again. I kind of want to Calm Mind again. If he's adamant, Choice Banded, Explosion. Let's, let's really take a look. Choice Banded, Explosion. That would kill. Adamant, Choice Band, Explosion kills. But short of that, he doesn't kill me. I could just Bloom Doom in his face. I can just Bloom Doom in his face. It's not worth dying. It's not worth dying. So we're just gonna click Bloom Doom. I know it was for the Suicune, but Suicune's not touching me now. I'm worried about the explosion because Suicune comes in and Ice Beams me for 27%. So. Latias gets a Bloom Doom off on this Clay Doll. And that just straight takes out the Clay Doll. So Latias kills Clay Doll with Z Energy Ball. Clay Doll goes down. So now what does he go into? Landorus Therian form. So he wants to knock off my item, but he can't. He can U-turn. He could be Scarfed. Uh, I no longer have Bloom Doom, which would have actually O-Code the Landorus as well. Instead, it's doing 50%. U-turn is doing... a lot. U-turn is doing, like, notably too much. Um... Knockoff is not doing that much because I have the Z item. It's still doing like 50 to 70%. Energy Ball 2 at two KO's Landorus though at plus one. So I'm just gonna click Energy Ball here. Wow, that's an Assault Vested Landorus, that is. Okay, well he's not, he's not, probably not adding max attack. Yeah, okay, so he's Assault Vested. That's fine, he got the knockoff up. And that's all right that I took that damage. Um, it's not perfect, but I could set up the Tailwind now and come in with the Gardevoir, which would do a ton of work. Um, although he's he's assault vested, so no, I would come in with the Lucario, which is Scarf anyway. So I can just not sacrifice. I could just switch into the Lucario now. I kind of expect him to predict that. Um, so my, I kind of want to go into the Infernape here. Uh, or actually, I think Gardevoir may be my best play. Gardevoir is probably my best play here, because even if he goes for the knockoff, I'm still intimidating him. Um, but I'm kind of expecting him to predict and go for a U-turn here. Because he's definitely Assault Vested. And 
So if he does decide to predict, yeah, he does go. He does go for the U-turn. So that's what I kind of expected. Um, but that's fine because now Gardevoir is pretty sh safe against almost anything. Um, the big problem is Victini here. So yeah, that's the big problem is Victini. Um, he just is if he's scarfed, he just comes in and clicks uh, Z create a whole bunch. Z create what? V create a whole bunch. And he's gonna Oko like just about anything. Now do I wanna lose Gardevoir right now? Or do I wanna lose Inferno? I don't want him to get red carded. Ironically, I don't want to go into Infernape right here and let him get red carded. I can't lose Lucario. Man, if I set up the Tailwind and gotten Switch Initiative on this, that would have been so good. That's okay. Um. Alright, we're gonna go out into the, the, the Infernape. It's the most disposable member of the team at this point. I still do have a solid chance to get that Tailwind up. So there's the V-Create. i probably survive this, but... Yeah, I eat that. But he actually gets red-carded, which benefits him. Um... That's definitely worst case scenario. But we can Willow Wisp it. Actually, I'm gonna set up rocks. I need the rocks up here. He's lost Claydol, which will be a spinner, and everything else. I mean, Victini needs to take 25% every time he switches in. I can't let him get free switch ins on that every time. So definitely get the rocks up. See what he goes for. Goes for the EQ. That's fine. Um, so down goes Infernape, and those rocks are, are more important to me than burning this thing. Landorus, T kills Infernape with Earthquake. So I can go into Lucario here and click Ice Punch. Um... Or I can go into Latias and click Tailwind. But I like the Ice Punch better. Even though it does bait in something to switch into this Lucario right now. Um, and even though I'm not intimidated, how much does Close Combat do? Although Close Combat isn't going to hit the uh, Victini as hard as I want it to either. I'm not intimidated. Um... How much does this do to Victini? Not a lot. Not as much as I want. Crunch does a ton to Victini. How much does Crunch do to a Landorus when I'm not intimidated? How much does Crunch do to a Landorus when I'm not intimidated? Not a lot. All right, well, we have to click Ice Punch. And if he switches out, he switches out. If not, then we get a kill. And the Landorus is what was putting a lot of pressure onto some of my team, so I'm okay with that. Lucario can then switch in later. Um, I needed that to be dead because this is my last physical attacker. So Lucario kills Landorus with Ice Punch. So he goes out into the Victini. This thing is Scarfed. It's Scarfed Teeny. Takes 25% from rocks. How much does it do with a V Create to Lottie? The Adamant Scarf. That's like definitely what I'm expecting to be the Adamant Scarf. There's a chance that it doesn't kill with a V Create. There's a real solid chance it doesn't kill with a V Create. And 
But if it's Scarf and it V creates and takes out my Gardevoir, then I go into Latias after I outspeed. He switches out. He switches out. Switches back in. That's 50% of his health accounted for. Close combat is doing um, 38 to 46%. No, wait, that's plus one Lucario because I was intimidated, but I'm not intimidated. So it's doing 20 to 30%. So if I can get one more switch into Stealth Rocks on this thing after that, then I'm set. All right. I have one chance, and it's going to come down to... I mean, obviously I trace Victory Star. I'm not going to survive a V-Create. So, Victini. Kills Gardevoir with V-Create. Um, but now I outspeed him with my Latias, and so he has to switch out. So while I Calm Mind, then I Tailwind, or while well, he's switching out, I can just click Shadow Ball. He still has the Suicune. The Suicune's a problem. I Calm Mind. I wish I had healing on this thing. I call mind here. No, I click Shadow Ball. I click Shadow Ball. I click Shadow Ball. Goes into the Ninetales. Takes Stealth Rocks. Um, Snow Warning comes up. Shadow Ball comes out. does less than I want it to. It's not a, it doesn't KO in one more turn. So I'm gonna have to now, because that my Lucario or my Infernape's dead, I do have to stall out um, Aurora Veil here. Shoot, I have to stall out Aurora Veil. How am I gonna stall out Aurora Veil? Alright. How am I gonna stall I know he's only got five turns of it. How much does a blizzard do to me at plus one defense? Special defense. Uh, where's my Latias? 50%. But so he's got, he's got life screen and reflective. So Shadow Ball's not killing from there. Energy Ball's not killing from there. Because I could call mine, but it doesn't, sur doesn't help me survive. Any extra turns? So the real question is, how do I win this game? And I think the answer is I probably don't. And that's okay. Like I said, this team was designed to just kind of have some fun, use some Pokemon that don't necessarily have the most competitive viability in the sense of a league format. But I did want to win. Kills Latias with Blizzard. And next up is my Lucario, which currently outspeeds Victini. Currently outspeeds Victini. How much does a crunch do to this thing? With a... Because I feel like it's not a whole lot. 10%. So it may not even kill with a crunch for and close combat doesn't do 50% to a Victini in any universe. If I had Brick Break right now, that would be super clutch. If I was Brick Break and not Scarfed. <laughs> um... I think close combat, 
I mean, Crunch is my only chance of winning the game. But it only does max 10%, and that looks like more than 10%. So I don't even think it would kill. So I have no choice. I have to click close combat here. And kill the Ninetales. Lucario kills Ninetales with close combat. Now he goes out into his Scarfed Victini. I outspeed it because of Tailwind. He could go into Suicune here and stall out the Tailwind as well. Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Um, however, no, it doesn't matter because he's Scarfed. I was gonna say, if he stalls out the Tailwind and his own Aurora Veil, then close combat does a lot more damage. But it doesn't matter because he's Scarfed, so he'll outspeed me after my Scarf. Um, and Skull's gonna do 70% at minus 2. So. Yeah. The hail stopped. There you go. Hail stopped. Leftovers. Scald. This is a good team. There goes the Tailwind. Close combat. And. Suicune should take me out here with Scald. There we go. Suicune kills Lucario with Skull. And that's good game to Tishen. I don't expect us something anything like that in the finals. This team had some fun stuff on it. Um, I neglected to run a couple of things that I wanted to run because I was like, this is more fun. Uh, it's fun to win, but it's also fun to just get a chance to do something stupid in week 10. Now, good luck to Tishen in the playoffs. I will not see you again until possibly the finals if we both make it there. So shout outs to you for beating both David and I in this league. Um, that's a good team you've, you've got there and a good, good player on the team. So I will see everyone in two weeks. Reminder, we are not having a battle next weekend because of the holidays. We are taking it off before the playoffs. I will be the one seed. I will be playing the four seed in my division. So it's not like this loss cost me much of anything, whereas Tishan had a lot in the line to win here. So shout out to Tishan. Way to be. Um, that's a 2-0. My worst loss of the season. <laughs> um, I hope everyone is well. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. And I will see you guys. I mean, this video is getting uploaded on Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. I didn't say at the beginning. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and wonderful week and enjoy your break. And if you have one, and I will see everyone on January 5th, well, 7th, for the Team Builder for the first week of the playoffs here in Season 2 of the TBL. Take care, everyone.